Hey guys, and welcome to a long overdue one more week to go trip report. Sorry for the lack of uploads recently, but we've done quite a bit of traveling since our last report, so stay tuned for a lot more content coming your way. I'm currently at JFK International Airport in Terminal 4, where I'm about to check in for my Etihad A380 flight to Abu Dhabi. I'll be flying in their business studios cabin today, and I'm very curious to see how this compares to Etihad's now retired A340, which I flew in just two years ago. I arrived at the airport around 7pm, and the airport was already quite busy. As you can see, long queues were forming around the check-in counters. Thankfully, I still had 4 hours to go until my flight. After passing through security, I headed directly to the Etihad Airways Lounge at JFK, where I would be spending the next 2 hours. The lounge is much smaller than the Etihad Lounge in Abu Dhabi, which is to be expected, but was still very modern and beautifully styled. The lounge was still relatively empty when I arrived, but got busy as the hours passed. I'm glad I arrived early to grab a nice seat by the window. Windows line the entire length of the lounge, which presents very nice views into the apron activity. I really love the design of the bar, especially the geometric shelving which takes inspiration from Etihad's livery. Besides standard lounge chairs, there's also these two-seater dining tables where you can eat your meal comfortably. Although the buffet spread was limited, the food that was provided was actually really good. I especially love the Mediterranean dips, as well as the lamb and potato curry. And here's my plane, being towed to gate B29. This means it's almost time to leave the lounge and head towards the gate. Welcome to Terminal 4 at John F. Kennedy International Airport. You should not accept offers of transportation from any a closer look at the gorgeous Etihad A380. I'm really liking their livery on this whale, it just feels so classy. This particular aircraft is Papa Echo, one of 10 A380s in Etihad's fleet. Boarding began a full hour before departure, which makes sense as there are a lot of seats to fill on the world's largest passenger jet. On Etihad's A380, the business class seats are all on the upper deck, along with first class and the residence, while the lower deck is entirely economy. Looks like we'll be boarding at the second door, which is the door that separates first class and business class. And check out this huge business class cabin. The seats are in a 1 to 1 seating configuration with alternating forward facing and rear facing seats. The seats also alternate between being next to the aisle or next to the window or the middle. All seats have direct aisle access. Since I'm traveling alone, I picked seat 16K, which is a forward facing window seat that's right up against the window. I personally think that this offers the most privacy. I'll stop talking for a bit now and let you check out the seat.
As I mentioned before, seat 16K is a window seat where your seat is further away from the aisle than for example 15 or 17K, so it's really quite private once you're sitting down. There's quite a bit of storage space and surface area for you to put things, which I'll show you a bit later. Here's some of the seat controls, which you can also control them from the touch panel above the side table. This large armrest opens up to reveal some storage space, and you can also find the noise cancelling headset here as well. The amenity kit provided is from Aqua de Parma, and hopefully I pronounced that correctly. It's made of a nice leather material, and I'll show you the contents later in this video. Above the side table, you'll find the dockable IFE controller, as well as this touch panel on the right that controls things like the lighting and the seat. On this far corner, you'll find two USB outlets. The tray table slides out from here and provides a decent amount of space. It has a nice wood finish, and you can also slide it forward to move it out of the way. The one thing I didn't like about it, however, was how much strength you actually needed to use to pop the table back into place. One thing I love about the A3D are these massive storage compartments along the side. It's perfect as I can just dump all my gear in here and not have it taking up any room on my seat or side table. Not that I needed both compartments, but unfortunately the forward storage compartment had a faulty door, which sometimes wouldn't open. A warm blanket is provided, which I only used when sleeping, as I tend to find aircraft cabins pretty warm in general. The footrest is spacious and quite deep, being 5'7", I was barely able to reach it from the upright position. Here's the standard coat hook. And again, here's the dockable IFE controller. It reminds me of the one used on the A350. The touch panel here gives you finer control of the seat position, the cushion firmness, window shades, seat massage feature, and the seat lighting. The wing view from seat 16K is an overwing view, so unfortunately I'm not able to see any engines for this flight. The window also feels very small compared to that of the Dreamliner, and I hate that it's double layered glass which makes it very difficult for any kind of photography. Now let's take a quick look at the literature provided. Of course we have the standard safety card, a sickness bag, there's also Wi-Fi provided on this flight, and I ended up purchasing a Wi-Fi package for $19.95 US to stay connected on the 12-hour flight. Also included are a couple of magazines, as well as a duty-free catalog. About time for pushback. Etihad flights always begin with a travel prayer, which I think is pretty neat, even though I'm not sure what they're saying. Thank you. 
Welcome aboard Etihad Airways. Please pay attention as we demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Is Havori Motor very good on rats? Or who will be daddy? Or the other guy? Be it Bill or Shiva. Place the elastic band. We had a long taxi out to runway 22 right for departure, followed closely by an Emirates A380. Guess it'll be a race to the Middle East. Before meal service starts, let's take this time to check out the IFE. The interface is nice, modern, and easy to navigate, and I especially love the large screen. The selection of movies and TV shows was enough to keep me entertained for the long flight. There is a slight touch delay, but it's acceptable.
Today's flight is just over 12 hours, taking us over Eastern Canada, crossing the Atlantic, passing over UK and Germany, and finally arriving at Abu Dhabi around 8 p.m. local time. Let me demonstrate some of the lighting controls in more detail. The first and my personal favorite is this beautiful side lamp. Then there's the ambient side table and footwell lighting. And finally, the reading lamp, which has a couple of different brightness settings. Meal service is about to start, so let's take a look at the menu. To start off, I had a Sencha green tea served with a tray of warm nuts on the side. For the starters, I chose to have the Arabic meze since I really liked it last time it flew on Etihad. For my main, I had the seared salmon served with a lemon caper cream sauce which was excellent. And finally for dessert was a warm chocolate souffle with fresh cream, the perfect end to a great meal. And of course, we can't forget a nice coffee. There were some light chops as we made our way toward the Atlantic. The washrooms have this fancy upscale look to it, and also features Aqua de Parma hand cream, the same brand which supplied the amenity kit. After the meal, I checked out the Etihad bar, which was empty at the time. There are a total of six seats surrounding this bar table, where you can have drinks or snacks with fellow passengers. I wouldn't imagine it to be very busy on a red-eye flight though. There's still 10 hours to go and we're only just beginning to cross the Atlantic, so it's probably time to get some sleep. One thing I really liked about the IFE was the split screen feature, allowing me to watch the air show while watching my movies. Now let's switch the seat into the lie flat bed mode. Etihad doesn't provide a mattress cover like a a or EVA, but the bed was still really comfortable nevertheless. It certainly felt very roomy and allowed me to get a couple hours of sleep. Let's check out the Aqua de Parma amenity kit. The contents are pretty standard, including a pair of socks, hand cream, toothbrush, and a small bottle of cologne. You can also fold the pouch into a little tray, which is pretty neat. From the duty-free catalog, I purchased a 1 to 500 scale die-cast Etihad A380 model, as well as an Etihad keychain. Because of Etihad's anytime menu, you can order breakfast whenever you want. I decided to have it a couple of hours out of Abu Dhabi. For breakfast, I had the poha, which is an Indian breakfast consisting of paneer tikka, spiced potato balls, and tomato chutney. As we approached Abu Dhabi, the sun started to set and it cast some beautiful colors into the horizon. We're now descending into Abu Dhabi International Airport. The sun had already completely gone down so I enjoyed the sea of city lights as we set up on our approach.
السلام عليكم مساءكم بكل خير واهلا بكم في ابو ظبي حيث يشير توقيت محلي الى الساعه السابعه و30 دقيقه مساء من اجل سلامتكم نرجوكم بقاء جالسين في مقاعدكم وابقاء احتياط المقاعد مربوطه باحكام اذا تتوقف الطائره توقفا كليا ويتم ادفاع And with that, my Etihad A380 experience comes to an end. In summary, I really loved my time on this flight. The privacy, spaciousness, and functionality offered by the Business Studio seat was top-notch, even though my USB outlet and one storage compartment wasn't working. The crew was really good as well, friendly, attentive, and took very good care of me during the flight. Not quite to the same level as Asian airlines, but still great. Food selection was a little limited, but what they did offer was delicious especially the Arabic meze and the Indian poha breakfast. Also, I really appreciate the fact that I could dine whenever I wanted to. Other than the seat itself, the bar area is a cool little space to hang out with your party, but I still preferred Emirates more open bar design, which felt more social and fun. All in all, it was a wonderful 12 hours in the air. Thank you for sticking around and watching this longer than usual trip report. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you could hit that like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. It really motivates me to make more high-quality trip reports for you guys. For more in-depth written reviews, you can also check out our blog, where we will have the same trip report and review with plenty of photos. Thanks for watching, happy travels, see you in the next one!